President Trump's Tulsa rally came one day after the United States recorded the most new cases of COVID-19 since May 3rd. And at a point when, according to Johns Hopkins University, the U.S. is doing a far worse job of controlling this pandemic than the European Union is doing, basically similar size, if you will. Look at that graph. Joining me now is infectious disease expert Michael Osterholm from the University of Minnesota. Dr. Osterholm, welcome back to Meet the Press. And I want to start with the same question I asked Secretary Wolf, which is, how do, we, how do you explain the fact that the United States has 25 percent of the globe's cases and, and, and it's basically we're sadly number one um, with a rocket ship? Well, first of all, good morning and uh, happy Father's Day to you, Chuck. Um, this uh, is a Father's real Day challenge you, for us. Yes. And, and thank you. And uh, at this point, we don't really have a national plan that really puts together what we're trying to do. We have 50 different states, the District of Columbia, the territories, all kind of with their own plan. And you've seen in the past week how disjointed that is. What are we trying to do? Uh, we're at 70 percent of the number of cases today that we were at the very height of the uh, pandemic cases in early April. And yet I don't see any kind of a this is where we need to go and this is what we need to do to get there kind of effort. And that's one of our challenges. Is this a failure of testing and tracing? Is that where this failure is? Or is this just across the board? Well, we have to understand that, as I've said to you on multiple occasions, you know, we're not driving this tiger, we're riding it. And while other areas have done much better around the world in stopping it after a very uh, uh, difficult period of time with it, uh, we haven't done that. And part of that is the fact that uh, we just have not really, I think, gotten the message across to the public yet that this is a very serious issue, that we can't shut down our economy, but we just can't suddenly say we're done with it. This virus is operating on its own time under its own rules, not anything we impose on it. And we're now trying to act like somehow we can policy wise impose our our will on this virus and that's what's happening other countries have been much more aware of the fact that the virus is going to do what it's going to do and so you have to basically stay locked down you have to limit transmission in areas that we're not doing and that's what i think you're seeing right now is this increases in a number of states because everybody's back to a pre-pandemic mindset basically without sort of a national structure here if we let this be 50 50 flowers blooming on how to do this, we're, we're never going to get control of this curve? Well, we do have to allow for local uh, decisions, meaning that, uh, you know, in some cases it's going to be different in rural America in one area versus urban America in another area. But at the same time, what is our goal? To hear the fact that we don't want to do testing is wrong. Uh, absolutely, we should be testing as much as possible. Second of all, once we do have these positive tests, what are we doing to make sure that additional transmission isn't occurring? How do we do contact tracing? You've heard a number of stories in the past week about some of the failures of contact tracing. Well, we should learn from those. What are we doing to improve upon it? And I think that right now we don't have even at a local level necessarily, the kind of plans that say, this is what we're gonna to do to get shut down yeah. uh, transmission over this period of time. And we need much more clarity that way. It's, it's almost in some ways yeah. seems random. Why are some areas doing better than others? We have yeah. to learn from what those areas that are seeing fewer cases, why that that's happening. You have said that a second wave is inevitable. Every pandemic, there's one, it's coming. Uh, we're, this one is no different. Um, Given that we've not gotten through this first wave, that we're sort of, as some people have called it, more endemic, if you will, are you concerned the second wave will be even worse than you have at first anticipated? Well, uh, in early April, our group put out a document that laid out different scenarios because we're dealing with the coronavirus. We don't know is that going to make it different than influenza virus, where you traditionally see that first wave, a period of a trough where very few cases occur, and then suddenly a flare up of a second wave. I'm actually uh, of the mind right now, I think this is more like a forest fire. I don't think that this is going to slow down. Uh, I'm not sure that it, the influenza analogy applies anymore. Uh, I think that uh, wherever there is wood to burn, this fire is going to burn. And right yeah. now we have a lot of susceptible people. And so I think right now I don't see this slowing down through the summer or into the fall. Uh, I don't think we're going to see one, two and three waves. I think we're going to just see uh, one very, very difficult yeah. forest fire of cases. By the way, team sports, is that is that probably going to not happen, considering what we've already seen as they are trying to trying to uh, trying to start up? 
Yeah, you know, at this point, uh, it's going to be a challenge if, you, in fact, you have teams that continue to have outbreaks of cases within their players. You know, at some point, uh, we'll hopefully have uh, a situation where we won't have all that transmission. But I think it is going to be very, very difficult at this point to protect players, protect their staff, uh, coaches, to protect the public. I think uh, it's not going to be easy to do. That's looking looking more dire there. Uh, Dr. Michael Osterholm with some uh, grim, uh, if you will, uh, short-term news there going forward. Uh, again, a happy Father's Day. I know you haven't seen your grandchildren. Happy. Uh, hopefully that will happen soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.